We now interrupt your regularly scheduled program. We got to go help Alex get his uh, F-14 put on. Some of you guys have been commenting on uh, my posts on some of my other social media channels. Hey, Stan, did you get rid of your F-14? We see the, the old plow truck's got the Western back on. Nope, didn't get rid of the F-14, got a new truck. And when we get a new truck, the guy that got the new truck has to take his favorite pusher with him. <laughs> so here we go. Alex got his way. He got a diesel. Yes. A di uh, he got himself a, a Ford diesel. You yeah. worked long and hard on us. We, 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 had, we, we talked about that all summer long, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. Back and forth, back and forth. Not only did you get the truck you wanted, but then you had to take your plow off and put it on your new truck because, you know, that's just the way it is. Right? Yeah. Nice new truck. I'd have a nice new plow on it. <laughs> oh. All right. What can we do to help you? Uh, just guide me in. You might have to... You might have to kind of run that button up there, up and down to kind of float it in a little bit. Okay. So now the new F-14 will hook up two uh it used to be just boss but now they have a, a adapter for western too i think you guys if you haven't seen it and this is your first time this is it right here is it working up and down up there zach yeah oh, okay snow power has a new adapter system that will allow it to connect to either a boss truck side mount or a western truck side mount one, only one guy can do hand signals. I'm sticking my hand up like I got the answer in class, but only one guy can do hand signals. Otherwise, it gets too confusing. I think you're in. Well, that was it. Was Did that you a... it up yet, Zach? Yeah, he's, he's damn close to being in right now, Alex. Well, last time I had a heck of a time because when I put that plow mount on the single cab, yeah. it must have been just tweaked a little bit. Yep. So Rick had to loosen all these bolts up to make up for that on the other plow. So when I tried to put it on this brand new mount, when I had a professional shop put it in, they got it straight. That's a hell of a lot easier than last time, I'll tell you what. That's in travel mode. The wingtips are up. Headlights are fully visible. Let's go into plow mode. Comes out. Wing comes down. That's a 14 foot snow pusher right there. Now wing it. There we go. Now we're wing going one way. And now we're clear cutting all the way through. was like he got overwhelmed with the snow that he could push mm -hmm. then he just drink, and pile drive straight through just shrunk the pusher up so he could slam straight on through wow. with the load still in it yeah while not even he didn't even slow down didn't even stop or nothing. no just he started to feel it and he just kind of shrank it up and just kept Pushed going like nothing yep 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 that's pretty cool yeah that is mm-hmm that's going to be really helpful when we got to throw these on a trailer that was the best part that I've ever seen going from a containment blade that's eight feet fits on a trailer like no other what's that 12? 12 yep yeah. yep Jeez, that's yeah <laughs> I know when Tim was kind of spitballing some ideas remember when he had that idea and I was like ah that's a freaking genius idea next you know I'm getting this plow in a couple weeks he sent a video I'm like damn Tim I don't know how they got <laughs> your idea two years ago but they did T Tim and Alex and I were spitballing ideas on how to create a pusher that because we need productivity mm -hmm. But also, we need to be able to transport it from site to site. Exactly. And this answers all of that. Everything, yeah, that's, yeah. All right, walk me through your truck. Tell me a little bit about it while we're, while we're in here looking at Oh, I mean, it's just got nice storage under the seat back here for all my tools and stuff. It's got this exhaust brake here. That's pretty sweet, dude. I've never had the luxury of that. What? You want to talk about not using your brakes going down a hill. That's it right there. I was getting off the exit at Atlanta on Chestnut there. You know how it's kind of a steeper 
down into the road there off the freeway, click that, held me right there. That's like a Jake break. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Just what? Yep. Oh my god. I'm not changing your mind, am I? <laughs> I'm not swaying you the other way, am I? I, I never, really hope I am. I never knew they had a Jake brake on a pickup truck. 2016 and newer for the Fords. They started putting those in there, yeah. Dang. So, yep, I mean, I don't even... What is up with your shifter, though? What the heck? <laughs> that is an old school... Real true 4x4 four four shifter right here. Yeah, That's I kind of like that. That's the way it should be. Yep, I like that. I mean, I do miss the button right there. Right there, you're ready to go. But this right here, you click it in, you feel it engage. That electronic button, that could break at any point. This right here. That I'm is in. old school cool. Yeah. yeah. I just did said that on purpose. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I said something good on purpose. That is actually pretty dang neat. Yeah, but other than that, it's pretty much the same exact like interior as the other truck was, you know. Pretty much Wait a minute, is this thing. a Oh yeah, another storage under there. I got all my paperwork under there and stuff. It actually goes up that way. What? Yeah. That is so sick. Huh. It's called a work truck for a reason. Yeah, did you know it had a Jake brake? It's a diesel. Of course it's going to have a Jake brake. I don't know if uh, the 2015 and older Fords didn't have it. It was a 2016 they, thing they added in there in the Chevys. I am not familiar with the Chevys. I've never seen a pickup it. truck with a Jake brake in my life. That's why when I seen it, I'm like, hmm. And Miles, my buddy, who's been hauling for yeah. us, he was like, have you used that exhaust brake yet? And I was like, oh, that's the first button I clicked. <laughs> first button I clicked to see what it does, you know? <laughs> you got to click the button. Well, in typical Minnesota fashion, it's starting to snow because it's been about... <clears throat> that long. We may be plowing tonight, but the cat blew a hose. Not the pusher, the cat. I wish it was the pusher. If it was a pusher, it'd be easier. So it's right here. This oh, hose. thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was that hose. <laughs> oh, shit. Boy. <laughs> I called Alex up and he's like, oh my God, I'm so sick of cat hoses. Oh. So the hose is inside of the boom. It goes all the way. It's got to be fished all the way through this way, up, and then... I don't know what this one runs on now. I think it runs right here. You can see it. This is the hose right here, right? This one? Nope. No, the, the one, you see the one that's split in half? Oh, damn it. Yeah. You gotta uncouple it from here. here. Couple it from here. And yeah, we just gave her a new oil change and everything. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. I've never had a machine blow so many lines. Any skid loader in my life. Mm-hmm. I've had that one single cat blow more lines than five other machines. Do you think it's what the guy before us did or do you think it's the design of the cat itself? A little bit of both. Okay. That upper hose, I think is less related to the guy. Uh -huh. All those lower hoses for the track assemblies, Yeah. it had all that mud compacted in there. Okay, that So the makes hoses sense. were like touching each other and chafing on each other. And then I took all the mud out and they were chafing even more, you know? So that would, to me, would say that that's a bad design. If they've got the hoses where they're buried in mud, because where do cat skid lo where do skid loaders go? Mud. Yep. If that can be an issue where then they just sit and rub in mud, to me, that's like a, a design flaw. Well, I'll show you how it gets all the mud in there. It's actually, I've been looking at it every time I took the track off both sides, thinking that's a terrible design. Because, I, you know, I. but then again, I don't know how you would get around it. I'm not an engineer, you know, so. But yeah, but we've never had any other machine ever give us this many problems with hoses. I sure haven't. Yeah, so you can see this here. See that big ass opening right there? Yep. That's where all the dirt gets caught up in here, spins off this cog drive, and it all just spits in there, you know? Goes right into the motor. Because I scraped out every bit of mud on this thing, and if you pop the cab right now and we pop the cab, there's going to be more in there, you know? Under the cab. Mm -hmm, into the cab compartment. This right here, you know, it's kind of hard to say if, if let's just say this bolt was loose here, you know, and it had, and it was kind of shimmying, but it doesn't feel like it is at all in any way. I mean, it's got a little bit of slack in there. And, but uh, this yeah. hose right here, I, hard to say if it's just a poor design by cap, but the hoses on the sides and those side openings, not a good one. Hmm. 
these openings in the sides are, in my opinion, the worst thing you could have on there. I mean, look at everything just spins off. Look at, you see the amount of dirt shit you get stuck in here. It all just goes right into there, you know? How they do that? That makes no sense. And there's no escape from it there, is there? There's no out. No. It just sits in there and just... It sits inside of this compartment right there. You know, when we popped the cab up, there's a big open area right there, and I bet it's filled with mud again after I scraped it out this summer, you know? Huh. All right, we got the cab flipped up. But this is where you could see... Oh, my gosh. That was all cleaned out. That was all cleaned out. So this is right there. This is... This that's, is all fresh. I had a yellow bottom in this. It was yellow. And that's a... All that... Yeah, but look at how there. deep it is over there on the sides. Right where you're talking about. That's right where it gets pushed right in. Yeah. That, I feel like, is a very poor design on their end. Take a guess at how much you think that hose was. Just the hose. Yep, just the hose. It's a long one. It's a long... Okay, so that helps. $121.50. No, no, no. It's a, it's a lot. It was a lot. I thought you would guess a little bit higher, 170. 170? Yeah. And the hose, the little hose that was like half the length for the the tracks, yeah. 100 bucks. 100 so bucks. I thought for sure that that one was gonna be like a $250 hose. Oh. You know? uh, hmm. God, you guys had to pull everything apart. Look at that. There's the main couple. Well, it's because it was the bottom one. It wasn't the top one, it was the bottom one. I don't know. So let me ask you a question, Alex. You think we should sell this machine or keep it? That's the that's the non-broken one. No, because you're the one that's fixed it every single time. This is like your baby now because nobody should know this machine quite as well as you. You pulled the tracks on and off at least five or six times. Just you, to fix the hoses, not even to swap them for winter tracks and stuff. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. So you yeah, tell me, do we keep there. it or do yeah, we sell it? Be able, uh, you know, I should be able to cut that one if you want to. I would keep it, but it, ultimately it's yeah your call. Yeah, no, he he's in love with that machine. I really me like not so much. I like the cat. So maybe I we like should just it replace too. it with a newer cat. Oh, now you're talking. Now you're, now you're talking. Now you're talking. <laughs> Only in Minnesota. Can we have negative 18 degrees with a 25 mile an hour wind, so it was negative 39 below. And then one week later, it's freaking raining out. Oh, welcome to Minnesota. How's that going? It goes. Are you having fun yet? <sighs> Zach wants to be a master mechanic, so he's learning the right way. Oh, I don't mind being By mechanics. master mechanicing things. What do you got left to do? This bracket and another bracket and then that's it. That's it? Two brackets and she's back together? Yeah. Huzzah! All right, Zach. Uh, Alex already went out to the plow site? Yeah, he just, you just missed him, so. Okay. Well, since Zach's so talkative, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll put this project on pause for another day and then uh, come back and revisit it when we got some better light. All right, so if you guys were going to get a new loader, what brand would you get? John Deere, New Holland, ASV, would you go with Caterpillar again? Would you get some kind of a less popular name brand, like maybe a Mustang, a Manitou, or something along those lines? I'd love to hear from you guys what you'd like to see next on the channel. I kind of love experimenting with new equipment and learning the good, the bad, and the in-between. I'm okay with things happening like with this cat loader and finding out all the hoses are buried in the muck and mud. And even though I don't like it, I like showing it to the world because if you guys are going out there and looking at buying a cat skid loader, now you can go and go, hey, I remember the hoses are buried in the bottom and there's no escape hatch. And we kind of learn that together. And if it helps save you guys some headache and hassle, Absolutely, I'm all for it. We're learning together and a rising tide raises all ships. And what about Takauchi? Maybe, maybe we get a Takauchi on the channel. I don't know. I want to hear from you guys. What do we experiment with next? Put it in the comments down below 
And that's it for this one. God bless. Go get them, you guys. We'll see you on another one.